In this tutorial, you will learn how to make a three-dimensional visualization of flooding. This process is reliant upon three different software, the first being Google Earth, the second being HECRAS, and the third being ArcGIS. There's a few advantages of this methodology. One, the results look pretty dang cool, and two, the precision of the HECRAS results is preserved. So at this location, there is 21.9 feet of flooding. So the first step that we'll be looking at is to download the 3DV flow files. So we'll navigate to this GitHub link. And then instead of downloading all these, we'll just download the zip file. Move that to our desktop and extract it. And we'll leave that there for a moment. Now we'll jump over to HECRAS. And the model that we're looking at came from the example projects that are provided when you download the software and specifically the project that we're looking at is within this file path. And this Muncie, Indiana model is saved in RAS 503. So that's what we have over here. And the first thing that I did was I went to tools and I checked to make sure that the projection for the project was correct. And that all the geometries were associated to the correct terrain. After that, I went back to the main window and ran the unsteady flow analysis. And once that was finished, I added a few maps. And for the 3DV methodology, it's important that for any result that you want to display in Google Earth, you need three inputs. You need the depth raster, the inundation boundary, and the water surface elevation. So next we'll pull up a blank MXD, and then the results from that RAS model are, are shown here in our catalog. And I'll pull those over. And then from that unzipped folder, we'll navigate to the symbology shapefile and bring that in as well. Next step is to change this to something that looks like water. And we'll change the display to 40% transparency. Next, we'll navigate to that toolbox within the unzipped folder. And then we'll be using the water surface elevation tool. And we'll just go ahead and drag and drop all of the, the RAS results. And make sure to specify KMZ at the end, .KMZ. Right now our cells are pretty large, they're 2000 by 2000. You can change that later on for more accurate results. But yeah, we'll go ahead and start running that. and ArcGIS is finished. So we'll open that test KMZ. And this is showing up in Muncie, Indiana. 
and as you can see they're in for a little bit of trouble at this location there's 12 feet of flooding and so now that we have some results let's talk about how they were made as we mentioned earlier we specified a cell spacing of 2000 by 2000 feet and you can see that here with the cell boundaries the results within this given cell are all going to be 12.4 and 12.1 feet of depth and 11.7 and how these are made is essentially from the HECRAS results for this region that we were just looking at we specified a 2000 by 2000 foot cell and then it computes the average water surface elevation and the average depth and that gets brought into ArcGIS along with break lines and a symbology shapefile and ArcGIS within the tool that we used converts that to a Google Earth ready file format that has Z elevation data stored. So to illustrate this point let's go to a more interesting location with smaller cell sizes. So we're in Austin, Texas here and we've got the Colorado River, Zilker Park, Shoal Creek, and Waller Creek. We've got the University of Texas over here and the downtown right here. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on the results for the Colorado River in this region. And we've extended the cell sides, sides to the ground. And each of the, these varies, and it has depth and water surface elevation values. So obviously the smaller the cell size, the more accurate your Google Earth results become. It just takes a little bit longer in ArcGIS. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below and I'll happily help out.